Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition and Simplifying the Painting Process. Now I call it simplifying the painting process not because painting is simple, it's actually pretty complicated because you have to juggle a number of things at the same time, but I want to talk about it in terms of how much you can simplify the painting process by what you do before you begin to paint, which is why I wanted to talk about the difference between thumbnail sketches and just sketches or drawings. Now, when I do workshops, or when I used to do workshops, I would always recommend to students that they do thumbnail sketches before they begin. And here's two examples of student thumbnail sketches. Now, it's very hard to do a meaningful drawing of something if you're not sure the meaning of why you're doing it, which is really what those thumbnails show. They're not really sure what they're trying to do. And so I wanted to demonstrate what a thumbnail is and what it teaches you and how it helps you before you begin. So here's the photograph we're going to look at and here's the crop I did of it. So you can see it's tighter, the shapes, the design, the structure is sort of more obvious. And then here's the thumbnail de demo. So a thumbnail of this image, and it's pretty much square, I would be thinking in this way. You're seeing a line here where we have the bottom of the barn. We see, say, the top of the roof there. It's coming in something like that. There's now a tree that's really just a square, right? And there's this big dark shape here coming into the darks here. And then you can see that there's, yes, there's a road doing this, but then there's this beautiful shape. And look at how far over it comes, actually, all the way to about here. It's a beautiful shape that is kind of doing this with a second batch there. We would have that little tower and a bit of red. And you can see that if you start thinking in terms of structure like this, you haven't even said anything yet and I haven't even got any of these sunflowers which are sort of the thing that you sort of think, oh, I want to do the sunflowers. And there's just a few in here to give us the sense of foreground to background. Maybe we put in that telephone pole. That is the structure taking us to here. Well, that's a thumbnail. That's like a road map of what you want to do. You're not going to get completely absorbed down here if you know that the lights and darks you want to get us to are here. That's what a thumbnail is doing. It's structuring for you what you want to have happen when you paint. So that's why I call it a road map, because it kind of shows you where you're going, where the main focus of attention is going to be and how everything else works towards it. And they're really useful if you're doing a plein air sketch, or plein air painting, because you often haven't got time to sit there doing a drawing because the light's changing so quickly. But you do need to get a strong sense of where you're going and what you're trying to do before you begin. Now I'm going to do a sketch, a little bit more elaborate, to kind of get involved in the subject matter a little bit more deeply. So, you know, with pencil and paper, it's a very simple, low-tech way of exploring. And, you know, I mean, so many people, they're just, well, they don't like to draw because they sort of feel in a way it's, you know, they don't feel they're any good at it and it doesn't work out that well. And, and very quickly, they think, oh, I just want to go and paint. And then you run into problems. But one of the things about drawing like this is you really discover things. You discover overlaps, you discover connections between things, you discover shapes you hadn't noticed, and it sort of just creates this uh, engagement with the image beforehand, familiarizes you with it. So I'm just leaving that so I can put the um, white chalk down there problem with the white chalk is once you put the graphite down, it won't, you can't make it see anything. It just slips over the top of it. So 
So, I mean, that's where I'm going to get us to go. Bit of value in there. Um, and you see, I'm just thinking of it in terms of simple shapes and the relationships of those shapes. I'm going to put a little bit of value here so we do see the difference between them. Because one will be green and one will be ochre, but probably I would gradate this darker at the bottom to push us into the drawing anyway. I'm not going to go too far up there because I won't be able to get the... So I'm just going to make this a little darker. The chalk pencil isn't just an all or nothing thing. You can put, just like you can put light and dark marks with a pencil, you can put light and dark marks with a. So I don't want this to be, but I do want, don't want this to be too light. Okay, I'm going to try to get that in, and I've saved it sort of. Um, but then we really, it's really light here where this tower is. And, white building. And I'm going to go a little less over here so I'm not pulling us out this side, you know, so it's kind of gradated that way. And then it comes down into this group here, which sort of takes us from mid-ground to foreground here. And, you know, the tendency would be like, oh, I got to get these sunflowers there. I'm so happy with the sunflowers, but really they are not going to be the center of attention by any stretch. And then I, now I can put this over top and soften that edge and it sort of disappears in there. And I'll put in one window here. So I'm actually using the roof pushes into the drawing. And there's the finished drawing. And that already gives us a pretty good idea of what the painting's going to look like. So you can see that the sketching process is a way to discover what you're going to paint, to solve some of the problems in advance. Because you're not just copying the photograph. You're abstracting from the two-dimensional photograph the shapes that you're going to use on your picture plane to the value masses that you are using to make your painting work, the simplification process. And all this business of the drawing is not external to your painting. What you'll find is it's embedded in it. What you discover when you draw is that you start to move towards those same shapes and it makes the painting easier because you've solved so many of the problems in advance. And so your success rate as a painter starts to go up. So, We'll see you next week. I hope you have a terrific week and uh, I look for forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Bye for now.